Hello and welcome to my first ever Throwback Thursday vlog thing. Um, this idea was started by Pages and Pens. Um, I will link her original video in the description below. Um, definitely check it out. I, I watched that video and I was like, I need to do this myself. This is so cool. So here I am attempting to do a vlog. We'll see how it goes. So basically the idea is that um, we're going to reread a book each month. And you get to pick whatever book you want to reread. Totally up to you. Um, yeah, so I picked The House of the Scorpion by Nancy Farmer. Um, I honestly don't know if anyone's ever heard of this book before. <laughs> I feel like every time I mention that this is one of my favorite books of all time, um, without, because I feel when people ask me that, if I say Harry Potter, I feel like they look at me a certain way, like, because they don't understand, they just don't understand, right? So I try to throw out different books, like sometimes I'll say The Book Thief, and sometimes I'll say this. Um, at least with The Book Thief, I think most people have heard of it, especially now that there's a movie on it. But with The House of the Scorpion, I get like blank stares, I'm hoping that thanks to booktube, that I'm not the only one who's heard of this book. Um, so yeah, I really love this book. It was the first book other than Harry Potter that I reread. It was kind of a novel idea for me to reread a book, to be honest. Um, I first read this in middle school, I believe. I think I reread it uh, in high school then, and then I reread it another time, actually, um, when my first, uh, ye like, first or second year of college, my undergrad. So it's been about five years now since I've reread it. Um, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty familiar with this book. Um, but I really, really like it, and I figured it'd be an easy one or straightforward one to do uh, for my first Throwback Thursday. Um, and also, like, I really like this book, and I think more people should read it. So maybe this will inspire people. I hope because I, I really like it, and um, yeah, more people should read it. Um, it's very applicable and very important. The messages in here are, and the themes. It's it's really good. Basically, if you don't know, and this is told right away. Actually, I read chapter one already, um, which is three pages long. So just just started it again, and um, yeah. So right off the bat, um, it's explained uh, that yeah, our main character Matt or Mateo. Not sure how to say because it it's Spanish. Matt, he, um, he's a clone, and um, yeah, this is a society where clones exist. It's kind of dystopian, it's kind of science fiction, but overall, it's mainly just a book about um, discrimination and just growing up and being a human, what does that mean, and um, like really big topics like that, which I personally really, really enjoy. That's probably why I like this book so much, is that I feel like there's so many good themes and messages in this book that I think more people need to read it, um, especially in our climate, you know, discrimination, is, it's a huge problem right now, and, um, you know, more people need to be talking openly about it. The nice thing about science fiction is that it can take a little bit of the heat off of the situation, just because, you know, instead of talking about, like, this specific culture that we're discriminating against for whatever reason, intentional or not, like, it's good to talk about the issue when you take it away from that and you put it on some, like, fictional one that um, doesn't exist, you know? So you can be more objective about it instead of having your own, like, emotions and experiences all wrapped up into it. But you can still, like, relate to, you know, the discrimination that he feels for being different, for being born differently, for something that he has zero control over. It's set in what used to be Mexico in this futuristic world. Um, or at least the border. But either way, um, like our main character, you know, the names are very, you know, Mexican and, um, there's a little bit of Spanish here and there. So it definitely has that culture to it too. So it, it's interesting. It's a really, really interesting book. It was the first book that I read that had, you know, like another language like thrown in there just here and there. I just, I think it's a really good book. So Rant aside, <laughs> I'm going to continue to update you on my reading progress as I continue on. Hey, checking back in again. Wow, um, I, I put it down for a couple of days and I'm back at it again. And I'm on page 36 and I'm about to keep going, but I just wanted to stop and just comment on... I kind of forgot how fast the plot moves along. There really isn't that much time set aside to like 
world building or setting or any that kind of stuff like it's just kind of thrown in there along with everything that just happens you know so something will happen and the character will comment on if this is normal or not and you know it just kind of goes from there so I mean chapter two is probably the closest that we get to like straight up like world building or introducing us to the characters but um, it's it's just amazing it's something happens right away you know on chapter two and we're like okay something different has already happened and now we're just jumping into the story um, which I guess you know being like a, a young reader would be really exciting all the stuff that I remember is happening already <laughs> You know, I, I kind of figured that there would be parts, you know, like you don't really remember the setting up part that much. It's usually the action and stuff that you remember. And so far, everything that I've read, I remember exactly, like, pretty much <laughs> exactly, exactly what happens. So it's uh, it's been interesting. I'm curious to see if there are things that I don't remember that happens. But we'll find out. Uh, we'll see if the pace continues to just, like, keep keep on chugging along <laughs> without uh, too much time to sit in it I guess so we'll see it's just been an interesting beginning of the book um, I still like it of course it's just I think this book has gone to the point where I just know it too well alright I'm checking back in um, I am on page 64 right now um, I just read a couple chapters with El Patron who is our main character Matt's okay so Matt's the clone of Elvatron. Let's just say it that way. Um, and Elvatron is very old. I think he's 140 years old, they said. Yeah, so <laughs> it's just really interesting to see him as a character and to see Matt's reaction to him. Um, it's interesting. I, I couldn't remember exactly, but like Matt instantly likes him. Instantly. And he can't really place why. I think part of it is like... You can kind of sense that they're um, that they look they look similar to him, but he can't really fully place it. He doesn't really know that exactly. And of course, like you know, Matt at this point is seven, and uh, Albatron is one hundred and forty, so they look very different. But obviously, there's some similarities, um, and there's just something about that that's comforting to him, and also just the fact that um, Albatron was the reason that he was. <laughs> taken out of his prison, if you will. Oh, I mean, I don't want to get into the specifics, because I don't want to really ruin the story if you want to read it. But yeah, he gets mistreated very badly, um, but uh, he gets rescued because El Patron finds out and he's pissed. <laughs> so it's really interesting because like El Patron, he's so just honest, like brutally honest. I think it's getting to the point where the plot is... Uh, slowing down again um a lot kind of happens right away off the you know, off the bat but um it uh it slows down a bit more and um the time kind of it goes a little bit more slowly and um <clears throat> it's just been a really interesting read and i like that um i don't know it seems fairly realistic you know like these these horrible things happen to our main character matt and he pretty much has straight up ptsd afterwards um, and it's, I, I, li I like that he, he has to, you know, slowly, like very, very slowly move on from this. It's not like you get out of a horrible situation and you're immediately better and fine and okay. Um, and Matt, I mean, he, he's definitely suffering from PTSD and he's very nervous to really trust his surroundings and where he's at and that he actually is safe. Um. And it's just really interesting to see to see it played out that way because again that's that's realistic. So yeah, it, it's been an interesting read, and I am excited to continue on. So I will check back in later. Hello, <laughs> I'm now 128 pages in House of the Scorpion, and something that I noticed is just <laughs> how short every chapter is. Each chapter is about 10 pages. Some of them are even a little less than that. Um, it really brings me back to just standard, like, chapter books when you're a kid. Um, except this is bigger than the typical children's book, but it's got this 
the shorter uh, chapters, but also the fact that each chapter has its own name, um, which is something that really only children's books seem to do, which, um, you know, you know, reminds me a lot of Harry Potter because that does that as well. Um, and I'm not really sure why adult books don't name their chapters other than the fact that sometimes it kind of gives away what's going to happen in the chapter. But, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm noticing that and also just, it's one of those things that, you know, you know what's going to happen and when something uncomfortable is going to happen, you're, it's almost like there's so much tension. You're like, no, don't do it. But you know that they're going to do it and you still have to read it and continue and go on. So I've been experiencing that. Hey, I just wanted to check in because I realized that Chapter 21's title is called Blood Wedding, which totally reminds me of Game of Thrones. So <laughs> it should be pretty exciting. Um, and if what I remember is correct, it's a pretty fitting title, um, all in all. So <laughs> just wanted to check in and share that with you. Um, it's definitely building up to the climax at this point. Um, it's kind of been a bit subtle, but I, if I do remember correctly, this next chapter is where the tension starts to build and build and build. Um, because right now, it was kind of, it kind of plateaued, um, the last couple chapters I read, so it's, it's amping up. Um, I'm at page, like, 200 as of right now. There's, like, 380 total, so I'm over halfway done, but there's still quite a bit left to this book. Um, so I will keep updating you. Hey, just another update. Um, I'm 268 pages in now. Um, getting into the last part of the book. Um, it definitely has a very distinct feel from the rest of the book. Um, I do remember this. Um, it always, it really sticks out my mind so much of being so different from the rest of the book. Um, and it always kind of threw me off. And it still does. It seems almost... So, just so sudden, and it really throws you off a little bit. Um, so the pacing is a little weird that way because, like, we had this epic climax, and then all of a sudden, it like the story continues for another, you know, at least 100 pages after, um, what seems like the climax. Um, so it, it's just kind of interesting pacing. I would say that I, I, I'm not enjoying it as much as I remember enjoying it the first time around. I think that while I think this is a good book, um, I, I just wonder if it's one of those things that it doesn't necessarily, you don't really gain that much by rereading it more than once. I would say rereading it once is good once you kind of know everything. It does kind of help you see how everything was laid out from the start, but I think that like continuing to reread it, like I don't know if it really gains anything. That's what I feel so far. I will let you know if I continue to think that way when I finish it, so I will keep updating you. Hey guys, I thought that I would finish my thoughts and feelings on A House of the Scorpion here at my bookshelf. Um, I just finished it, um, and I must say that it, it kind of just ends almost. Like, I mean, it doesn't leave you really... It, well, it kind of leaves you on a cliffhanger, kind of, but not really at the same time. Like. I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, the end kind of leaves you just wanting to know more about, like, what happens next. Not to say that anything wasn't resolved in the story, because I don't know if that's really true. But it just, it, it leaves you on a note of, like, but what happens next, you know? Like, what? I want to know. Um, which, for the longest time, like, this was a standalone book, but now um, there's been a sequel published called The Lord of Opium. Um, which I own and will probably be reading soon. I'm not sure if I'm going to read it next month or not, but either way, I do plan to read it. I've never read that before, so I'm excited um, because I'm I'm pretty sure it's going to explain um, all the questions I had at the end, or at least I hope so. So um, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a duology or if there's going to be more books. I don't really know, but either way... Um, so it kind of leaves you on that unsettled note, but now, at least, there's another book to hopefully answer those questions. I don't know if it's good or not, um, but it's there, so that's interesting, at least. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I really did, but I'm going to be honest. I think that I've reread it too many times. 
that, like, I'm not, like, I just remember too much of it. So to me, like, I knew everything that was going to happen as it was happening. Like I said, I still enjoyed this book. I, I really, really like it, but I just, it just wasn't that enjoyable of a reread. And, and this kind of brings me back to something that I've been thinking about lately. It's just my star ratings. I'm personally starting to feel like it doesn't fully encapsulate, like, my feelings about the book. Um, so I'm thinking about kind of breaking it down into, like, very specific categories. So, like, one would be, like, enjoyability, which in this case, like, for this personal reread, the enjoyability would, would go down quite a bit. And I would have another category for, say, you know, characters. You know, how well written are the characters? Do I enjoy them? Do I think they have lots of depth? Things like that, you know. Um, and so on. I haven't really figured out what I would do, but I would kind of rate it on these different scales and then kind of average those ratings out um, to get like the star rating. So it's not so arbitrary because that's kind of my problem right now. I feel like my star rating is I try to weigh these things out in my mind, but it's not very scientific as of right now, so it seems very subjective. So, there's that. So, from here on, I mean, I don't normally reread books very often, so most books that I have read, I haven't reread. So, from here on out, it should be more exciting, I guess, to read, at least for me, because I don't remember exactly what happened, so. It should be more enjoyable, so I'm excited for that. So that's really it. Um, this was a really fun vlog. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out for you guys, but it was at least fun for me to be able to kind of spit out my thoughts and feelings as I'm reading this book. And yeah, I'm really excited to continue to do this in the future. So as always, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video, and until next time.